Jeff Wilkinson is one of Britain's leading building inspectors and a fire engineer. He's got wide experience with high-rise blocks in particular. He joins us from London. Jeff, welcome to breakfast. Yeah, good morning there. The investigations go on. The drones are in and around this building uh, investigating. Um, so we don't know what caused this fire, Jeff. But from your experience, what is likely to cause a fire to behave as this one did, which is basically to, to race up the building so quickly, like a matchstick one eyewitness described it as? Um, well, I think the first thing is that uh, in all our experiences, this is... Um, the, the worst tragedy that we've um, seen. Um, I've been involved myself for over 30 years in building control and fire safety, and I've never seen a, a building uh, go up in, in this way. Mm. Um, they're traditionally constructed. Um, the building in question, in fact, dates back to uh, the 1970s and would have been constructed of solid concrete construction. So the, the immediate areas that people um, are starting to look at are the um, refurbishment works that, that were carried out. Bear in mind that this building has stood for uh, several years. Um, I'm sure there have been other minor fires that have started in mm. the building. Uh, and none of them have spread in the way that, that we've seen. So okay. um, something seriously has gone wrong here. Well, let's look at what that might be. A lot of people who watched this fire and watched it spread are pointing the finger at the aluminium cladding on the outside of this building. This is part of the, the uh, eight, £8 million pound refurb. Yeah. Is there anything to support that theory from your experience? Why would cladding be the problem? Um, we've certainly seen in the past um, fires from 1992 uh, to more recently where the fire has spread up the gap between the external cladding panel and the uh, original face of the building, mm. effectively creating a chimney which draws the uh, fire up uh, at a, a higher rate. Um, that in itself shouldn't have caused the fire to spread in the way that it has. It would have to be broken back into the building um, and then having got into the building um, it would then have to have somehow managed to start cutting off the escape routes which is um, some of the concerns that, that are being raised. Mm. So it could well be that the, the fire spread both internally and externally but it's far too soon for us to, to actually determine that was the cause. But that's right but if this cavity you talked about and I've seen mm. others describe this cavity mm. too as operating in that chimney-like mm. way drawing mm. it up. I mean, I suppose it's not a big stretch to, to imagine that a, um, a housing commission high rise that was built in the 70s, refurb or no refurb, might have uh, openings or gaps in it that would allow a fire on the outside to get inside the building. That wouldn't be unusual, um, would it? It, it? It's certainly possible, but as part of the work, you would have thought that um, inspections would have been made to ensure that uh, any holes or gaps would be adequately fire stopped and that uh, cavity barriers would be installed um, as part of those works. So it it's um, unusual, as I say, for, for something of that kind to have happened. Um, and the questions have to be asked as to whether um, people did actually make the necess necessary checks. Mm. Well, let me put it this way. When you see cladding like that on a building, does it concern you? Have there been other examples? I mean, there was a, a fire in London in 2009 where people died after an mm -hmm. electrical fault in a, in a high-rise block in South London. And the fire there was largely caused, it was found by botched and unsafe renovation work and failure for the council to inspect. I mean, what's your, your, your experience in this? What's your hunch here? And when you see cladding like that in the outside of buildings, do you worry? Mm -hmm. Um, the, the 2009 fire was a different set of circumstances, although it may have um, had um, some issues with the cladding on the building. Um, the fire itself would appear to have um, spread through internal means. There were um, air conditioning uh, and pipe works put into the building um, that could potentially have led to, to that spread as well. The, the cladding systems in themselves are not... Um, a problem, providing that they're installed correctly and that uh, the individual flats remain the fire type boxes that they should be. As part of the works that are carried out, um, inspections should be made to ensure that um, that they are correctly fire stopped. You're listening to RM Breakfast. Jeff, Jeff Wilkinson is our guest. He's one of Britain's leading building inspectors and fire engineers. 
Um, Jeff, you've got a lot of experience. We're now hearing and reading, in fact, reports from residents' group there, the Grenfell Action Group, so people who lived in that building with concerns back in 2012, uh, a fire risk assessment of the building, which found that the fire extinguishers in the basement boiler rooms and uh, on the ground floor were 12 months out of test date. Um, and there's also a more recent returns, uh, more recent concerns raised in 2016, so this is after the refurbishment, uh, warning that there was only one fire exit now. It had gone from three fire exits to one fire exit and that if that were blocked, then people would be trapped inside. Do these kinds of concerns um, from the residents group over a few years, do they worry you and do they you know, make you think perhaps the right inspections weren't being done? Um, it obviously causes concern that uh, these matters have been raised and seemingly weren't acted upon. The, um, from what we can tell, the reports were made through. Um, we understand that the fire service had made inspections uh, relatively recently. The question about having a single fire exit is not uncommon. Um, is it adequate in a number- building of 24 floors? Um, well, it's certainly proved to be over the past 30, 40, 50 years. Um, the number of fires um, that have, have spread beyond the room of origin are actually quite, okay. um, quite low. Um, so, yes, it is perfectly adequate in, in that way. And, Jeff, just finally then, from your experience, what do you think is the most likely scenario of what's gone wrong here? Because something has. Um, so unfortunately, until we actually know where the fire started and, and what the cause of the fire was, um, it's very early to speculate. Um, certainly questions are being raised about the cladding, um, but as I say, the um, buildings themselves are designed predominantly to have what we refer to as passive fire protection, that solid fire protection that's in place permanently. It reduces down the fire size, it keeps it into fire type compartments. If that had worked correctly, then this would not have happened. So we have to ask questions about was that in place. All right, Jeff Wilkinson, thank you very much for joining us.